What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, I was thinking about a show we could do is talk about all the rumors and all the possible cameos that it's going to have and whether we think it's going to be dope or whether we think it's going to be lame. I don't know. But for the Wolverine, Daniel Radcliffe is now one of the rumored uh cameos as well as Tehran Edgerton right Ta well this yeah this is this is this is John Krasinski as Reed Richards all over again the rumor is the Wolverine for the MCU is supposed to appear in 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 in, in this movie and also Keith Urban what is it, right? Keith Urban right no. Carl Urban. Keith Carl, Urban Carl, Carl. Come on, man. My bad. My bad. <laughs> now, now that, that'd be, that'd be country singing Wolverine coming in hot. Um, what are your thoughts on all this? But isn't this but isn't this basically a who's who of what the fandom has done in the past few years as far as who should replace Hugh Jackman, right? Like there's been a Taron Edgerton camp. There's been a Daniel Radcliffe. You can find the fan art online where people draw these actors into this, this role. And that's why I say it is the John Krasinski Reed Richards cameo all over again. It's fan service. I still have yet to see a Zach McGowan piece of art. I think it would look amazing, but continue. So, I mean, and like, I don't know that there's been a huge Carl Urban camp, but look, I mean, we know he, he, he plays gruff. He has the look, he has the voice. Sure, he's a name actor, you know, who has credibility in the space with Dread and with the boys. Fine. Again, everything about this movie to me suggests they are going for big, not necessarily great. I still, I, I still have a lot. I continue to have growing questions as to what they're putting together is going to be a great film. There's no question it's going to be a big event, and these things feed into that. Now, your little subplot, which is if we throw a huge amount of Wolverine variants on screen, and then we play Where's Waldo, and the actual future Wolverine is one of them, okay, that's interesting. I don't know how they like how we link that and how we'll feel about it. Will we, you know, but. Again, it just has a little bit of this feel of, I don't want to say, it's almost like Wolverine narcissism. Like, I don't know what's going on. It's like, we just have to have like all of this jammed in around Hugh Jackman's sort of swan song in this film. So I don't know, do you, like when you see these about Wolverine variants, does it make you more excited for the story they're going to tell? Or does it make you more worried that it's just more, more kind of clutter on screen? It's more clutter and curiosity than I'm looking forward to seeing a dope story. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's, it's it's to go see a show, Brian. It's not to see a well thought out sort of no way home multiverse type th situation. This is just let's get everybody in this joint. But this seems to be this theme of we're heading towards the end because Loki too is supposed to in is to lead into this movie or other way around or yeah, it's supposed to lead into Deadpool Well in three. theory, yeah. I mean you were getting Loki in October, so it should in theory, like if there is a connection to the broader MCU, that it should be frame. And remember we know we've we we know that Mobius is in Deadpool three, right? So there's your sort of cast linkage and TVA linkage. So yes, Loki should probably have an Easter egg of some kind that you know connects you to Deadpool. And there's also, I don't know if it's been confirmed yet, but there's also rumor of a, a Doctor Strange movie being worked on, correct? Well, that was the whole Cumberbatch. What is he? What is he? What is he planning to be on set for next year? Because an Avengers movie is not being shot, as far as we know. So, what else would he be doing? Like, what if you just look at the like? He doesn't really fit in Captain America: New World Order, does he? he doesn't really fit in the Thunderbolts, does he? Like, so it's like, what is he doing? Um, but he does have between No Way Home and his own sequel, he has the multiverse connection. Now, I do think the one thing that is valid and makes sense and needs to happen in Deadpool 3 is they are saying that the story basically treats the Fox universe as having been kind of a real thing 
and then provide some sort of reset or end game for that. I am okay with that. That actually makes some sense to me. If you can bring that many characters in and you're gonna try to wipe wipe the slate clean or do something to kind of explain where they all went if you're not gonna use them in the future. Deadpool is a good movie to do that in. I am I am okay with that. So that actually was one thing I found out I had to say was like, all right, we finally have a story nugget I can get behind. We started to have a conversation. I wish I had recorded it, but let's see if we can regurgitate what we had spoken about. When it was rumored that this movie was being worked on, I always said to myself, that's spot on in terms of look. Uh, is it too comic book accurate? Maybe. But let's see how he would do. I'm curious to see if... I'm curious to see the look. Um, and I think he sees that and he's trying to see if he can get that. He was trying to see if he can get that done and now he has the possibility of doing it again. And it is the opportunity for fans to see it. And if they like it, who knows, right? Who knows? This is his shot, Brian. This is his shot. Yeah, look, I mean, again, this this is one of those, it's a combination of fan service, but this was actually a project that was happening, right? This is something that was in production at one point. It never made it to shooting stage, but he was signed, he was attached, he was heavily involved in the production of a Gambit film over at Fox. And so they're kind of trying to, I guess, bring that to life. And you're right. I mean, I, these days, you know, we, we've never seen like, yeah, we've had no f official follow-up to Garfield's performance in No Way Home, but I mean, I think that's provided the roadmap in theory for how you can come in and re Actually, Well, you know, what's actually also doing that right now, and we'll get to that in another show, is Hayden Christensen as Anakin in these Star Wars shows, to my mind, is remaking his legacy episode by episode. But there is that same DNA of if I come back and I spin the character just right and the audience response to it there might be something for me on the back of that and so there's no doubt in my mind like you look at you know Channing Tatum doesn't really do a lot anymore he doesn't act a ton like you don't see him on screen anymore he's more of a celebrity than an actor these days so this would be a re-entry into something if he could hit it big I agree with you that physically as a two-dimensional drawing he looks like Remy LeBeau mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I don't think his acting chops are... Now, first off, I am biased. I love Gambit. Gambit was one of my favorite X-Men. I, I, as a kid, I practiced throwing cards because <laughs> I loved this character so much in the animated show. That dude was smooth. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Cherie, of course. So to me, to pull Gambit off is much more about a swagger and a presence than it is even a look. And so Channing Tatum to me is massively overrated as an actor. I have never found him to be a thespian. He's, yeah, he's a great dancer. He's got awesome rhythm. Witness Magic Mike, step up. But he, to me, like when he was given a chance to be a leading man, like in G.I. Joe, he was terrible. He was bland, he was boring, he was wooden. And if Gambit is anything, he is none of those things. Yeah, so yeah. I do not want to see that for this character. Wow. So if they want to do this, make the fans happy, fine. I do not think we will walk out of the movie demanding any more of Channing Tatum as Gambit, and I don't want to see it, period, full stop. I, I, I'd like to see it. I'm curious to see it. <laughs> even, if, even if we don't go, listen, we're getting like 10 different Wolverines. We can get one Gambit. You know what I'm saying? So I acknowledge that. I just don't think he's going to give you anything to be like, I now need this Gambit movie to happen. Yo, Chad and Tatum, if you're watching, that's a challenge. <laughs> that's a challenge, yo. You got to be, you can't be you. That's a thing. Exactly. And every character that you've been, it. you can't that's be just it. you. Because as you Duke, know, he was him. Yeah. He said same voice, same presence, nothing. Yeah. So, what do you think of Ra Daniel Radcliffe's uh, uh, possibility of the rumor, possibility of, of him being over? So, Radcliffe is interesting because of the, the whole, you know, he's done everything he possibly can to get away from the Harry Potter role, uh, which I understand. You know, when you're a child actor in a role like that, like you can really get lost in that forever. My, 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 my skepticism is that 
he has avoided franchises as a result of that, like the plague. And this would be as high profile a return as you could make. Um, I actually, as an actor, he's grown up pretty nicely. Like his range is pretty good. Like you could sell me, like if he was like, hey, I'm gonna put on some weight and I'm gonna channel like a fiercer older side. I, I, I'd at least be intrigued to see it because contrary to my Channing Tatum take, I actually think he can act like for real. Um, but like I said, I think it's on his side of the table. I think there's a real high bar for him to kind of say, hey, I'm willing to do five, six, seven pictures over a 10 year period in the machine again after, you know, after what he's already done. And quite honestly, like there's been so many rumors that like the Warner Brothers have tried to get him to come back and do something Harry Potter related. He just will not, will not touch it. I'm so used to listening to a specific type of Wolverine that has been consistent throughout animated series for the most part even in live action. And he don't sound like a Wolverine. You know, no, he, not, not the voice we're used to. Yeah, it it yeah, would require yeah, yeah. a leap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, would, you would definitely it's, need a transformation. I agree. That's why Cal Dodd's voicing a Wolverine in the animated show is so good. Because he has that snarl constantly in the voice. And yet, when it comes to Gene, he's able to emote. You feel it. You feel yeah. the sensitivity even as he's basically growling during the episode. And that's hard to do. And then, then there's the other guy, Tar Taron Edgerton. Taron Edgerton. Yeah, who again, like a comp now, you know, he's won a Golden Globe for the Elton John portrayal. Um, he's got some action chops with the Kingsman series. So, like, yeah. He, he, the other, the one thing with these two guys, and I'm wondering what you think about this, because Hugh Jackman is, I think he's 6'2. He's. But as you said, comics accurate Wolverine is five seven three like Muggsy Bogues. Five, four, he's pretty <laughs> short. What do you think about that? If they went for like a, and did not do any tricks with the camera, and they actually allowed the because Radcliffe is pretty short, Edgerton's pretty short, that they allowed an actor who was like five seven or five eight to just be that size, and then you'd have like you know Gene Gray's pretty tall. Like you actually had an actress who was like four or five inches tall. Like. What, I mean, that would be comics accurate. Do you think it would look weird? On I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a gamble, Brian. It's a gamble. It's a unique build, too, if you do it, right? Because you basically would need an actor who's almost built like an NFL running back, like someone who's like 5'8", 210, and chiseled, right? That's the thing. He's not, he's not like the way he's drawn. He's always drawn really strong and really muscular, but you're right. He's squat. He's not... Like long and lanky, and Hugh Hugh was always in shape, but he's a lanky dude. Like it's yeah. it's a different look. So. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know I throw his name around a lot. Zach McGowan would be perfect for the role. He's still in his forties. He has the, the the voice. He has the look, and he's an unknown, Brian. And when you see him and when you picture him in that character brian i think you can get a believable wolverine a believable wolverine brian a believable well the one advantage with wolverine's character is you don't need a young wolverine because he's effectively not ever that exactly. he's an ageless character so like you it really doesn't matter how old the starting point is it's only matter can you physically pull off the part. I mean, Hugh Jackman's now 54. Like, he's even admitted, like, it's hard to get in that kind of shape and do those, do the stunts. And, like, that's really the challenge for the actor. But for the character, Wolverine is shown to be grizzled a lot of the time. Like, there's no, like, requirement. I don't want, not, I, I don't want him looking Superman young. Situation. This is not the Superman situation. And, and by the way, I just got to address this. For everyone out there, like, oh, nobody know who Zach McGowan is. Tell me what role was Hugh Jackman in before he got Wolverine? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Nobody, he was a complete unknown. And it was inspired, it was inspired casting at the time. So stop it with that argument. That argument is, 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 is mute. But that's what's going on. Anything else, Brian? Any other cameos that you that you're uh, interested in talking about? I, I mean, Joe, we also have the you know like the production of this. There's some pros and some cons. So I, I got to So Sean Levy is the director, and I've kind of like I've got to describe him as I think of him as like a B plus guy. It's like you don't really get a bad movie ever, 
but I don't think that he has that one movie where you're like, he's going to write his ticket off of this yet. One thing I like that he's doing, and we saw this, I know we talked about the beach scene and all that sort of stuff, but let's give them this. They actually went to a beach and shot it. He did say this is an on-location practical film. I will say for Marvel, they could really use a well-done one of those right about now. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah, got to yeah. give him that. But then you sent me something which was a little more eye-opening, which where he was kind of talking about, like, he's not even really thinking about the movie as a whole. He's kind of just taking scenes and putting them together. And that fit, All right, into, what's the next? Whole, like, <laughs> that fit into the whole, like, this feels like an event, not really like a great cohesive project. Like, I, so it's kind of, you know, ups and downs there. <laughs> Listen, regardless of whether it's a good movie or, or not, I think... It will be a good time. Something that's certainly needed. And it's for us to have fun with this. So at the end of this film, it, if again, if it leads towards the end of what we currently have or once was, and this is a, a swan song, then I'm, I'll be happy with that. I, I, yeah, I think, I think you're asking the right question, which is, what is the ultimate objective of this movie? Because like, there's a lot of competing cross currents here. I think for Disney, I one of the things I expect, and I don't know how this is gonna go, is I think they, they are looking to prove something with the R rating. I think they really want to have credibility that they can create an R rated project like this and not have it be watered down and not have it be more you know juvenile than than the fox version was so I, i'm interested to see like does that mean they overcompensate does that mean we get too much stuff then we're just like ah oh, this is this is gore and language and content that's just like there for the sake of the rating i think as you said there's resolution like we're resolving the fox universe are we resolving the mcu but clearly they don't want this character to go away, right? They're in the Ryan Reynolds business with this character. So he also has to be the start of something too. Like that's a lot going on in one film at a time where they can't really afford to mess it up. Now, as we said, I think the money will be there. I think I, I'm, I think the promotional campaign is gonna be great. My expectations are incredibly high for the teasers, the trailers, how Ryan Reynolds is gonna promote this, how Hugh Jackman's gonna promote this. By the way, he's got more time these days because he's getting divorced. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I, I really think that, that the hype will be there. And I think the money will be there, the opening weekend in particular. But what this is supposed to, like, do for us as the fan base going forward, fascinating. Because it could go in a lot of different directions. And it could go right, and it could go very wrong. Yeah, but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, all these cameos. Uh, for the Wolverines especially uh, Daniel Radcliffe Tyron Egerton uh, my person, number one pick Zach McGowan nobody's talking about him fine but that's number one for me and all the other cameos what are your guys whose cameo are you looking forward to, to the most in this film and why? Let us know in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time on the Nigerian Report. The show goes on! Yeah!